guys, today I wanted to just share with you my stamp and storage solution and how I store my items. What I'm currently doing right now for my stamps is I'm storing my stamps in these Avriel stamp storage pockets. I purchased them from scrapbookwarehouse.com. You get a package of 25 and I put all of my larger clear stamp sets in those pockets. Not all sets, but most sets do come with coordinating dies. And the way I'm storing them now is I just kind of put them loose in the envelope in the back of the stamp set. I really don't mind that because they're not falling out of the top of the pockets, but sometimes when there's smaller dies involved, as you can see, this one's flipped forward through to the front where the stamp set is being stored. So they're not really holding in place the way I would like. I just picked up these dies from My Favorite Things and they came already on these magnetic sheets. And when I saw that, I just went nuts and I needed to have magnetic sheets for my dies. Currently, my husband and I are redecorating our home and when I mean redecorating, I'm more like mean renovating. Like we are tearing out our entire kitchen from top to bottom and replacing everything. And I was at Lowe's and Home Depot and I was looking for vent covers for our floors. And I ran across these while I was looking innocently for vent covers. They were about $5 and change. And you get, like I said, three sheets in here. And these sheets are huge. These sheets are eight inches by 15 inches. The measurements are right there. And when I saw these, it just jumped out at me right away that this would be my solution to storing my dies. Basically, that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm gonna to be reorganizing all my stamps. I have a lot of new sets that are stamps and dies together that don't have the white paper backing. So I'm gonna take it one step at a time. Okay, step one is going to be to take all these new dies and stamps that I have and put them in the correct size envelope. I use two different sizes for my large stamp sets with coordinating dies. I use these large Avery L pockets that I showed earlier. They're right here. I purchased these from scrapbookwarehouse.com and they're just a clear envelope, really nice, really heavy duty plastic. And then for my smaller dies that do not have coordinating stamp sets, I store them in these little envelopes here. They're from Simon Says Stamp. They're exclusive to Simon Says Stamp. And they're small little envelopes like this. I know they're hard to see. You can store CDs in them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the stamp set. This first one here is a newer one from Lawn Fawn. It's called Monster Mash. I'm gonna remove it from the plastic. I'm gonna store this in a larger envelope. So I'm gonna put it right there. And even though it is smaller than the envelope, all my stamp sets go into this size because I like it to be uniform. Then I'm gonna take the corresponding dies. These are a little bit harder because they put them down with tape, so I just take it real easy. I don't mind damaging the packaging. Okay, and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna keep it in the same envelope. Now I will eventually put a white piece of cardstock in here to separate the two, but this is step one, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Now these here I'm gonna store in the smaller, and let me just see if it's going to fit. Actually, that rectangular die is a little too large, so I'm gonna have to go with a larger pocket for that, and that is okay, because there are a few dies that do not fit in the smaller pockets, and I do move over to the larger pockets when that's the case. Okay, I'm just going to remove the triangles from the backing, or the rectangles, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna place them all in this envelope. And as you can see, they're all loose now, and I don't like that because they're just gonna kind of clink and make noise. They will not fall out of the pockets. That is one good thing about these pockets, but I don't wanna keep them in there just with loose like that. I would like to have them on magnetic paper. And I'm gonna to continue to do that with all my new stamp sets. And when that's all done, we'll move on to step two. Okay, I have everything completed and put in envelopes. This pile here is going to require the white cardstock dividers inside of them. They are not in the envelopes. These here already have the white cardstock and the dies in the back. These just require metal sheets. Same with these, they have the white cardstock. They just require the metal 
sheets and these require the white paper cardstock. So I'm going to move these aside since they only require metal and we're not going to be doing that until step three. And these are the ones that require the cardstock. We're going to put cardstock backing in each of these. Okay, to cut my backings, I use Georgia Pacific 110 pound cardstock from Walmart. It's about $5 and you get 150 sheets in this whole ream. It may be a little bit more than $5, but it's under six for sure. Okay, and I'm going to cut one cardstock for you. The first thing I do is I take my sheet of eight and a half by 11 and I line it up with seven and one quarter. <laughs> And the other direction is five and a half. These are the two extra pieces you get. I save those, they never go to waste. And this is the card that you end up with. I'm gonna place that inside the envelope and that envelope is complete. And see how the dies are loose? I'm hoping to get those on magnetic strips. We're going to do that in step three. I'm gonna do one more for you. This is an eight and a half by 11. I'm keeping it horizontal. I'm lining it up with the seven and a quarter as my first cut. Then I'm gonna rotate the paper and I'm gonna line it up with five and a half. This is my excess paper and this is my panel that I've created. I'm gonna take my next stamp set. I'm gonna add in the panel. I put the stamp set in the front. I put the coordinating dies in the back. You fold over the flap, you tuck it in, and now you have your stamps on one side and your dies on another. I'm gonna continue that for the rest of the ones that I need to fill. I cut all of my cardstock for my larger envelopes. I'm now gonna be cutting my cardstock pieces for my smaller envelopes. And how I do that is I take a sheet of eight and a half by 11, and the first cut I make is at four and three quarters. And then I make my next cut at four and three quarters. And I do this piece at four and three quarters. This is your leftover, which I keep, and I get two pieces for two separate envelopes. I'm gonna take that, one of these, slide it into the envelope, fold over the flap, and now that's backed with the white cardstock. And I'm gonna do that for all of my remaining dies. Okay, step two is complete. I got all the white backed cardstock in each of the envelopes. And basically what I'm gonna do now is go through and determine which ones I wanna put metal sheets in for step three. So I'm gonna separate all the ones that I feel are kind of loose and shaking around. Okay, on to step three and cutting the metal sheets. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I had been in Lowe's and I was looking for vent covers for our house renovation that we're doing. And I ran across these magnetic sheets and I just thought they were perfect. They just jumped down at me to use them for my dies. There is a three pack of them. The sheets are eight and a half by 15 and they're eight inches wide. So they're perfect because I'm gonna be cutting my squares four by four. And I just thought they were really great. And they're running about $5 and change a piece and I got four of them. So let's break one open and I'll show you how I'm gonna cut it. Okay, let's cut this package open. And if you saw my last haul video, you saw me say that I do normally do not cut things on camera, but I am getting over that today. Okay, let's pull these out. Now I do know that one side is white and I'm okay with that because I'm gonna be using this side and they look really, really nice. Okay, here's a sheet. I'm gonna see if I can cut it. Now I can already tell it's too long for my cutter here, but I'm gonna do this in increments of four inches. So this is eight by 15. I'm gonna do four, eight, 12. So let's cut this to 12 as far as the length. Now I don't know if my cutter can handle this thick metal, but we're gonna give it a try. It cut with no problem. Now this section here is eight inches, so I'm gonna do a four inch cut and it's still a little too, actually, no, it's perfect. That was just my uh, guide 
that was a little too much. So we're going to do four inches here. Let's cut that down. Okay, and then I'm going to do this in four inch pieces. So let's cut this at four. We'll do the next cut at four. And this one should be four. So now we have three pieces. I'm going to do the next piece in the four inch cuts as well. Four. Four. This one will be four, and this is what's left over, which is fine because I have some long border dies that I'm going to use for this piece. This piece will not go to waste. I didn't feel like I needed them to be bigger than four by four, so let's take this utensils die from Paper Smooches. Let's place it on there. Oh my god, I love it. It's working great. They're sticking no problem not falling off. I'm going to slide that inside the envelope against the white cardstock base and I absolutely love that. Now my dies are not flying around and not going crazy. Now guys as far as the uh, vent covers from Home Depot I'm sure I did not create this. I don't claim to. I'm sure if you search this on YouTube there's probably like a thousand crafters that have come up with this idea because I know I'm not ingenious enough to figure this out on my own. It just happened. I was in the store shopping for grates. I ran across these sheets. I thought it would work. And I'm not even sure. I haven't even checked myself on YouTube to see if other people have used this method. But I absolutely love it. I'm going to do another one right here. And this has really, really tiny, tiny pieces that I do not want to lose. I'm going to flip one over. Let's see if we can get it all to fit. It all fits. I'm going to slide it back in the pocket. I'm going to turn it over and yay, it fits and it looks great. So I'm going to complete all my smaller pockets. Before I move on to the large pockets, I just wanted to show you this on the smaller pockets. This is a rose, mini rolled rose from Dynamics. If you can see, it's very tiny and it's two small pieces. I didn't feel the need to use a four by four sheet. So what I did is I used one of the extra leftover pieces that you get after you cut the four by four. And I figured I would just cut this probably, let's see, by four. So it's just a little bit smaller. And then the dies fit on it perfect. I don't feel like I have to have all my magnetic pieces exactly the same. And for the smaller dies, I only need a smaller piece. So that works out really, really great. Now I'm on to cutting the metal pieces for inside of my larger pockets. Um, I think most of my sets are within this size and this is about five inches. And since this piece is 15 inches wide, I'm gonna cut it at five and five. So we're gonna try that first. So I'm gonna do five inches. Then I'm gonna do another five inches, so we have five inches even, and then we're gonna do four inches this way. So this way we have a lot of different pieces and it should fit all the stamp sets on it. That one was a little tough to go through all those pieces. Next time I'll do less, but then we have five by four and there's no waste. So I'm gonna take one sheet and it fits absolutely perfect. Now obviously you can cut these to whatever size you like. I was just trying to utilize the existing um, measurements of eight by 15 on the original metal sheet. And again, this one I'm missing the stamp set so I just wanted to do the die. I'll do one more. This is my paper smooches set with the coordinating dies. Let's see if I can get them all to fit. And these actually I hadn't even separated, so I'm just going to leave them like that. And yes, they fit perfect. Most of the sets fit on the 5x4. 
All my larger stamp sets are complete. As you can see, I mainly stuck to five by four because the sheets cut evenly that way without any waste. But there was situations where I had to go a little different. This here I went smaller because I had a smaller piece left over from my smaller envelopes. But for instance, here I had to go larger because these dies were a little bit larger. But I absolutely love how these all came out. I'm really, really happy having the dies on magnetic sheets on one side and the coordinating stamps on another. Okay, on to the final step, which is placing on the labels. The labels that I use, I purchased on Amazon. They are Avery labels and they are number 8257. I do run them through my computer. This is the size of them and you get 30 of them. So I'm gonna go over to my computer and print out a sheet to get these labeled and I will be right back. Okay guys, I have my labels printed out from my computer and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a set of stamps and you know, in hindsight, you can put the labels on first. I don't care, to me it doesn't make a difference. So I just grab the label. I always put it upside down. For some reason, I line things up better upside down. I put the little label on the package like so. And there we go. We have this, my favorite things. Which way is the candy set with the coordinating dies on magnetic sheets. And I just find it more economical to buy these labels instead of doing it with a label maker. I have so many stamps that if I did this with label makers, I would be here forever and I would use tons and tons of tape and it would get very, very, very expensive. And that's it guys. If you have any questions, just leave them below. I hope this all made sense. I know I was kind of all over the place with a lot of steps, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.